Hey guys, it's Will here and I'm back with another painting tutorial. Um, tonight got one that I've been wanting to do for a while actually, the Hammers of Sigma scheme for my, um, my Stormcast Eternals. This uh, lovely gold scheme similar to the one that GW use. Uh, I wanted to do this for a while because I'm really pleased with how this army looks, particularly when there's like lots of them together. A really beautiful army, um, even if I do say so myself. But um, yeah, I've had trouble getting it quite right on camera, but uh, the upcoming or possibly already imminent release of the New Age of Sigma has uh, given me somewhat more motivation to do this. So uh, hopefully I'll get this out before the new edition comes out or maybe just a few days after, depending on when that actually comes out, because as of this, as of today, we don't have a release date. So uh, this is what the final mini is going to look like. I'm not going to show you the basing on this one because I've got another video on that, but I'll put a link in the description. But uh, yeah, this is what we're aiming for, this nice multi-layered gold scheme um, and generally a really nice army. It's a good thing about Stormcast uh, being a relatively elite force. You don't need many models, so you can focus on making each model look absolutely beautiful. Now this is the mini that I'm going to be uh, painting up tonight um, and as you can see it's already assembled and base coated in Corax white and we're going to start with the gold, the biggest area of the model um, and for this I'm going to use Retributor Armour so I've already got some on my palette and just added a little bit of water to make sure it flows well and doesn't clump up too much and we're just covering the whole mini in this. Now you don't have to get the absolute whole mini. Obviously there's some areas like the main area of the shield that aren't going to be gold but um, you know it doesn't matter if you get paint on those at this stage because we'll be going back over those in different colours later anyway. What's important is that all the areas you do want to be gold end up gold um, and with that in mind oh, there is certainly no harm in giving this a second coat. We've added a little bit of water to the paint so it's not going to clump up and give too thick a coat. So uh, yeah, if you need to do a second coat to make sure you've got good coverage, then that, then you know, go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm just trying to get all the gold areas on here, not missing anything. And this is going to take quite a while. Um, so once that is done, I will come back and show you the next step. So all the gold areas are now gold and it did take me a couple of coats to uh, to get that good coverage um, and making sure that everything is covered. Although, uh, you know, generally Retributor Armour is a pretty good paint for coverage. It's not uh, not one you're going to have too much trouble with. Um, you may wonder why I didn't use the Retributor Armour spray paint and that's simply because I find that with very complicated models the spray paints don't cover sort of like the underside of all the armor so all these sort of nooks and crannies in there easier to get in there with a brush um, anyway now we're going to give him a wash and that's going to be Reichland Flesh Shade um, this is a really good color for um, washing gold with it uh, gives it quite a warm look gets down into all those recesses to shade it um, but doesn't sort of uh, take too much away from the gold so uh, just doing all of this over all the gold areas and because you're covering quite a lot with this you do have to watch out for any pooling particularly around the uh, the sort of center of the model I find it tend to get a bit of pooling and also around the feet so uh, you want to just uh, perhaps even keep a brush on hand just to remove any excess if you think you're getting a bit too much on there because uh, I find if you get too much pooling on the model it can uh, end up always looking wet even after it's dry and that's uh, I suppose that could be a good look for certain things but not for not for a storm cast. Now that that's dry you can see all the recesses are nicely shaded um, but the actual highlighting on the gold we're going to leave till later and um, we're going to block out the main other colours first and starting off we're going to go with lead belcher for the metal parts and cantor blue for the blue parts. Starting off with a lead belcher here just on all the bits you want to be metallic um, like this uh, chain mail down here, um, the head of the hammer and also the sword here and the reason I'm doing both of these colours kind of almost together is that they're going to have the same ink wash to them they're both going to get um, a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade so I'll just finish up with the silver and then come back with the blue 
with the Cantor blue, you're just looking to pick out all, all the areas you want to be blue. And in this case, you need to be more and more careful not to get it on the other areas. So like the, uh, the lightning bolts off the side here are going to be white. So it doesn't matter if the blue goes over them because we're still going to paint them later. But the gold, you obviously want to avoid that um, because otherwise you're going to have to go back and redo it. And that's just a nuisance. So uh, the shield is the main area, but we've got a couple of other places like the shoulder pads and this uh, like, um, I don't know, like leather straps on the armour, the non-metallic parts of the loincloth down here and also the belt, which I might need to go to a smaller brush for because that is quite a small area. Um, so there's a fair few bits on this and you can see it's not quite giving me perfect coverage everywhere. So I will probably go back and do a second coat once this is dry. So then before we block any more base colours out, just going to give all the blue and silver areas a wash with Drakenhof Nightshade. And uh, using the same shade on two different colours not only helps to uh, sort of uh, speed up the process, but it also um, helps to draw them together. So the, uh, the recess details where they connect will obviously be uh, pretty much uh, the same colour. Um, and uh, yeah, just want to be carefully applying this, avoiding the gold. Don't want to get it on any of the gold because that's going to be a right pain to redo that. And uh, yeah, once this is dry, we've got a few more base colours to block out. But before we do those other base coat colours, um, I'm just going to give the silver parts a highlight with Rune Fang Steel. And this is going to be dry brushed. Um, and the reason I'm doing this now is because it can be sometimes a messy technique dry brushing. And particularly around the sword here, it's very close to other areas. So uh, doing this now is going to mean that uh, it's not going to go on to other areas that we've painted other colours later on. And this dry brush is just a nice easy way of highlighting metallics um, so uh, you can still see the slight blue tinge of the shade there um, but you've got a nice sharp edge highlight um, brought on by the dry brush uh, if my camera will focus there we go and that's basically those parts done actually it's a very simple way to do it um, and that allows us to focus our time and effort on the other parts of the model the next thing to do is to base coat some of the other minor details and for that we're going to first need a Shabbaty Bone, then Mephiston Red and Eshin Grey. And starting off with the Shabbaty Bone, um, it's going to be on this parchment down here. Now some of the larger, fancier Stormcast models have a lot more of this um, and it's almost kind of like a, a Space Marine Purity Seal, um, kind of uh, I think serves the same sort of function both aesthetically and probably practically for the guy. Uh, not sure, need to read more of the fluff on these guys to be honest. Um, but yeah, so we're just highlight doing that in Shabbaty Bone. Then we use the Mephiston Red for uh, the grips on the weapons. So we've got the, the sword here and also his main hammer. And then finally the Eshin Grey goes on all these little joints in the armour here and you may need a slightly smaller brush to get into some of these. Um, you've got a few on the front there on the arms but the main areas are on like the back of the legs and the back of the knees here. And um, because this colour is a layer um, rather than a base coat like the Mephiston Red you may find you need two coats to get good coverage on this. But it is worth, even on these smaller areas, spending your time on that, especially with an army like Stormcast, who are uh, more of an elite force. Once those areas are dry, they're all going to get an ink wash. I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia, Agrax Earthshade and Null Noil on the different areas here. So starting off with the Seraphim Sepia, which is going to be over the parchment areas. Then Agrax Earthshade on the weapon hafts and... With this it is important to be quite uh, sparing with it because it's quite a dark jump from the red down to the brown but also um, particularly on the raised weapon here um, the hammer you don't want to uh, let it pull too much at the bottom if you use too much you'll uh, get sort of a cluster down by the, the hand here rather than what you want which is it just settling in all the details there and then finally null oil 
in all of the uh, the grey areas where he's got this kind of uh, dark grey undersuit here in all the cracks of the joints here fill all of them in with Nuln oil now that all the ink washes are dry you can see the model's got some more uh, depth to it but it's looking rather dark and dingy so we need to brighten it up and add to the depth at the same time by layering some highlights on there. So I'm going to start with these bits here in between the armour um, because they're quite dark and also they're quite fiddly to do so we'll uh, get them out of the way first. I have to say these are probably the most annoying parts of a Stormcast to paint and I'm glad that some of the new models have got these covered up by capes. But anyway, we're going to go in with Eschen Grey which was the original colour we used before we washed them and just paint in all the raised areas in here with this leaving the deeper recesses in the original colour oh, not the original colour, sorry, the, uh, the ink washed colour and I'm just going to go around and do this on all of those like um, under the arm here and around the backs of the legs and all of that Yep. and then once those are done we're going to give them another highlight and that's going to be with Dawnstone and this is just going to be on the uh, the highest raised areas on here just to, uh, you know, pick out the uh, the raised, the most raised folds in the cloth. So that's those bits done now, and at the moment they stand out a little bit too much for the undersuit, but it's going to be fine because once we paint up the rest of the model, they're going to stand out less, and so they won't be so intrusive on the eyes. They're just a, a fiddly bit to paint. We've got to get out of the way. Now we're going to do the weapon haft. Now um, this has got a lot of detail on it compared to a lot of, of weapon handles in Games Workshop models and that's all good. Um, I'm going to highlight that with Evil Sun Scarlet. Now you could, if I just zoom in there, go and highlight every individual one with kind of just a really fine brush. But to be honest, the level of detail um, is such that you can get away with just dry brushing it. So if my camera will focus, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Just dry brush those to uh, bring those out. If you really want to uh, go the extra mile, you can pick out each and every one. But even on this detailed scheme, I find it's a bit a bit much so we'll just do the do the dry brush there and if we zoom back in you can see that's how that looks it's just a nice subtle effect to highlight those next thing to do is going to be this parchment strip here that I keep wanting to call a purity seal because I do too much 40k um, and for this we're using a shabty bone um, and what we're going to do initially is overbrushing. so this isn't quite dry brushing but it's not quite painting either it's kind of a midpoint between the two so uh, if you see here you're kind of you're brushing it across with less paint on your brush than if you were uh, just painting normally but more than more than dry brush so you're catching all the areas apart from the deep recesses so that sort of gets the majority of it back up sort of the obviously these letters here and in the deeper cracks you want to avoid um, and this overbrushing technique is great for that and this can be the initial layer on it then what we're going to do once this is done is overbrush it again on, but using less paint and a color that's been um, mixed to be a bit lighter so we'll still use a shabty bone but I'm going to add a bit of um, white scar to it so I've mixed in that white scar now and we're just going to start catching the more raised areas with that so there's less paint on the brush here than last time it's closer to being just a dry brush and we're just focusing on the raised areas um, the sort of the outside of the folds and the top as well leaving the bottom a little bit darker and then just going to give it a final highlight um, that's really true dry brushing by this stage and that is going to be in almost pure white with just a little bit of the ashabti bone in there just to keep the colour um, somewhat consistent so just catching the most raised parts here to uh, highlight this and with that done you can see the majority of the little details are done now and it's just the main areas of colour, the blue um, and also the gold that need doing as well as this little bit that's going to be white on the uh, shield but we do that almost last. So for the blue we're going to start highlighting that up with Cantor Blue which was the original base colour. Um, 
And so what you want to do here is getting it over the majority of the blue areas. Um, I think the uh, the back of his loincloth is probably the best place to show you. You're still you're doing the majority in this, but just leaving the deepest recesses where the shade has settled the most, just that little bit darker um, to start giving you some um, of a three dimensional look to that. Um, and you want to do this slightly differently over the different parts of the model, obviously slightly different techniques, the shoulder pads, um, the areas you're looking for to keep in the shaded colour are right up to the edge of the gold there. So you're almost going up to the edge. And also like this bit across here, you can leave a bit darker, but the majority of the shoulder pad is going to get this and uh, just the deepest folds in the uh, in the cloth down here. Then we're going to start building up some highlights on the blue. And for this, um, there's quite a lot of different blues that GW produce, um, but I don't all own all of them. So in the end, for a consistency across the whole scheme, I've decided to uh, mix up the colours that I'm using. So we've done Cantor Blue already. Now we're going to do a mix of Cantor Blue and Teclis Blue. Then we're going to go to Pure Teclis Blue and then finish off with a really fine highlight in a mix of Teclis Blue and Fenrisian Grey. So. Uh, got this first mix on my palette already and I find when you're mixing colours um, you need to add a little bit more water than you would if you were uh, not mixing them, if you're just using them neat, um, just to make sure they continue to uh, flow properly. And we're doing this over just, you know, the, uh, the more raised areas, so you're still leaving a decent amount of that Cantor Blue showing, but you're just catching these, these raised areas on the blue armour. Um, things like the the corner of the shield the shield's an interesting one because you end up leaving the vast majority of it as it's a very smooth surface in the um in just the cantor blue and it's just the edge you give the highlight to whereas on something like here where you've got a much more textured surface around the belt you can use quite a lot more um, and on the loincloth quite a lot more of the uh, the mixed blue here to uh, bring out that texture so then switching it up to the techless blue, we want to do the same thing on the same areas, but leaving just uh, a bit of the previous colour showing. So you can see there you've got a, uh, a gradual layering effect there. And uh, one of the areas I didn't show the first time was round here on the, uh, the back of the loincloth. You've got quite a lot of blue there. So you need to, uh, oops, if I'm actually touching the model, there you go. So you want to, uh, build that colour up there as well. And then once that's done we're just going to go for the final highlight which is going to be that mix of Fenrisian Grey and Teclis Blue just on the sharpest and most raised details. So the side of the shield is an obvious one here. Um, also like the, uh, the top of the pauldrons here. Um, you just want to be as light as you can, you know, I've probably done a little bit too much there. Um, you know, just really doing it very finely with a, a fine detail brush. So now the blue's done and that's all looking very nice and sharp. Uh, but now it's on to the gold. Now the gold is like the big kind of thing with this model and the, the particular part of the finish scheme I'm really pleased with because it looks so shiny. Um, so we're starting up with Retributor Armour. Obviously this was the colour we originally based it in before we washed it. And so we're going back over this covering the vast majority of it, just leaving the deepest recesses. Um, you know, it's really sort of dipped down between the armour plates here um, in the, uh, the washed colour. And you'll notice that there's a few places where it's kind of got a bit mucky, like around here, where like the blue or the other colours have, uh, have covered over the gold. And uh, that is part of the reason I'm doing the gold this late in the scheme, because, uh, you know, it gives us an opportunity to tidy those up. Um, also want to do the hammer motif on there. And in a couple of places, particularly where you're tidying up, you may need to do a second thin coat of this. Um, most of it would be fine, but just like here where you're tidying up the blue. Um, so this is quite a time consuming process and uh, it's part of the reason sort of uh, that this, this scheme works particularly nicely for an army like Stormcast is that it's quite an elite army so you can do quite a time consuming scheme on them. So I'm just going to go around and highlight all that gold 
uh, well, layer all that gold and then come back and show you the next bit I'm going to do. So we've got the contrast now between the, the darker washed areas and the brighter highlighted areas, but we've still got quite a way to go on the gold. So next up we're going for Auric Armour Gold, as this is a, a lighter gold. And the idea with this is that we are going to sort of be halfway between layering and edge highlighting. So on these larger flatter surfaces, you'll kind of put quite a lot of it on there, particularly towards the sort of the top and the, the raised areas. Whereas on the more the sort of the finer details, like say and the shoulder pad here, you are sort of focusing more on the the edge. And you can see here, it doesn't particularly on the camera look that much different in terms of colour from the, the Retributor armour. And that's okay. That's kind of how layering gives you a good effect when it's done well, is that each successive colour is just a little bit lighter. Um, but you go from a dark colour to a light colour and the transition gives it, you know, a nice sort of smooth look to it rather than a very sharp edge highlight if that makes any sense, or I could just be babbling at this point. So again, you're going over the whole model here with this. Uh, places like this, you're going to focus more on the edge. Um, and yeah, going to do the whole model and come back and show you the next colour. Then for the next highlight, we're going to use Liberator Gold. Now, I find with this particular colour that you have to give it a really good stir. You can't just shake it. You seem to have to stir it to get the right colour, which is this very light gold colour here. Um, and we are just going to be highlighting again the same areas, but covering slightly less than we did last time. Still leaving a little bit of the colour underneath showing. And there are some areas where we might not need to uh, use this at all, like areas that aren't particularly raised. We're just going to go around the whole model, highlight it again with this. On the scheme that GW actually show on their channel, they leave Liberator Gold as the final highlight. Um, but for mine, I actually like to go one colour lighter. And that is this colour here, Runefang Steel. Uh, quite an old pot of the stuff, but it's still perfectly good inside. And this is just a really fine highlight along the raised surfaces, just to give it a sort of a real, a real shine. And this, I think, is, is why my Stormcast are so especially shiny. You want a really thin brush for this and use this very sparingly, because you don't want the model to come out looking silver you still want to keep it looking gold just with this very fine silver highlight that just makes it really shine and uh, yeah make sure when you're doing this you add plenty of water so it flows smoothly but not um obviously too much you don't want to make it a wash but you do need a very good flow so you've got control on it so we're almost there now. Um, we've done all the armour and all the blue parts, all the little details. The only thing left to do is this little white lightning bolt symbol on the shield. So we're going to start that by base coating it in Administratum Grey. Um, because we're going with a fairly light colour over what is in place is quite a dark colour, you might need to be prepared to do two thin coats to get this to cover. But at the moment, I'm actually finding that's, uh, that's covering all right. You just want to be nice and careful with this. doesn't necessarily matter about using a small brush, as long as you've got a brush with a really good tip to it, um, so that you're not going over the areas you've already painted. Once that's done, we're going to go for our next layer of colour, which can be Ulthwan Grey. And this is going to be over the vast majority of this, just leaving the, the deeper recesses and sort of right on the edge where the light wouldn't really get to, um, sort of like the side edges where this uh, is a bit more recessed. Um, and this again is quite a thin colour, so you may need to do a second coat of this, depending on how good coverage you get for the first one. And as always, better to do two thin coats than one thick one. And then we're going to finish that off with a final highlight of White Scar. And so you want to go to the thinnest brush you've got for this and you're just looking for the most raised areas which would normally be on the sides but on this symbol it's actually right down the middle that you want to highlight. It's uh, 
because of the way it points up in the middle. So yeah, just going to finish that off. And with the shield done, this liberator is now finished. And as you can see, he's got that nice shiny finish on there. Um, and this is more of a, uh, a slower paint scheme to do, but that's okay because Stormcast are a very elite army, so you can afford to spend a bit more time on each model. It's not like you're trying to do a horde of like uh, 40 orc boys or something. You know, this is uh, um, an army where you're not going to have a huge number of models. So yeah, why not take your time on it? And this works really nicely for custodies as well. A very similar sort of gold scheme would uh, would work nicely for them. Um, I'm not going to show you how I do the bases on these guys. Instead, I'm going to pull over one here that's already based because I've already got a video on how I do these little fire bases so uh, feel free to have a look at that I'll try and remember to put a link in the description and yeah hope you enjoyed this video if you did leave me a like and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon bye